Now, let me backtrack a little bit. This is a 572 that came in not running. And in order to do a proper vac test, now I better start with that, is you got to seal things up. So um, I'm going to plug this on the outside that that's a problem. But I've got a kit where you have things that look like this that plug the two straddle ports and there's a bracket that pushes them in. And then I've got a plate that looks something like this, well, like this, that goes over the exhaust port and then you screw that in and seal that. And I've got this rubber, soft rubber nipple like this that goes into the spark plug hole. And then I've got the little Mighty Vac system. So let's try this again. See if we got any vacuum at all. See how fast it drops? It'll draw a little bit, then it just drops right to zero. Now, the definition of win is if I can get this up to seven or eight pounds and it holds it for three or four minutes without dropping uh, a significant amount. I think the spec is like one pound every four minutes or something like that. It's good enough. Well, this, I, this one here, I can't get anywhere. It won't, it won't build pressure. So now the next question is, where is the losing pressure? And there's a few things you look at almost immediately. For example, like the decomp. So we'll take that out and plug it. Try it again. Um, checking your... Checking the blocks to make sure that they're not leaking. Uh, they usually don't, but you check them anyway. And then we're going to go and pull off the clutch and take a look at the PTO bearing. Uh, this one's got a massive air leak. It won't run. And uh, we're trying to find out where it is. I have a suspicion that it's in the bottom end. But before I go tear apart this saw, I want to make sure it's not something simple like a, you know, an intake manifold ripped or decomp or something along those lines. You know what I'm saying? Well, I did a couple of things. One is I put a shim underneath the carb plate that holds those two uh, buttons into the strato parts of the uh, manifold. And the other is I plug that. And let's see if we have any difference at all. There's no difference. PV blaster around the exhaust to make sure that plate's holding at the bottom. Nope, it's not where we're losing anything. Alright, so I guess the next thing we got to do is let's take a look underneath the clutch. And we find the issue. That seal just popped right out. And I'm not really sure it's something I can repair with another seal. Hmm. <clears throat> I mean, it looks like that's something I should be able to push right in there, right? Well, it looks like it needs a new bearing, so I guess we'll be down into that saw, tearing it apart. See it? And the seal had come out, but the bearing failed first. I'm hoping that the case has not been destroyed. I don't think it has, but so, fail the vac test, right? wouldn't run well it's probably a good thing because had it run like that for too long it obviously would have destroyed the case the way the other one was so now we have a project but that's kind of how you go about it you know do a vac test before you start digging into things and um 
I guess the point that I want to make about fact test is like common service tool. It's one of those things that gives you information that tells you to go to the next step. It verifies things. In this case, it said it wouldn't hold vacuum, which, which means now I start digging into to the saw to figure out how come it won't hold vacuum and I run into the bearing. Well, common service tool has the same kind of a effect to a mechanic. It gives you feedback based on the things like the error codes and where the operating history has the carb settings that gives you clues into what to look for next. But uh, this one here is pretty obvious. So now we have a project, right? But to review, a little Mighty Vac system is not that expensive. And of course, you got to figure out how to plug a hole so it holds vacuum. In this case here, it was two rubber pieces that did it. Make sure that decomp is plugged. I've got the kit that plugs the intake manifold. And I made a plate um, that plugs the exhaust. So you have to have all the top end parts plugged up where it holds at least 10 pounds of vacuum because you're going to shoot for 7 to 8 pounds on a test. And then, uh, you know, both vacuum plus pressure, you got to do both. And uh, it needs to hold at least 7 pounds and it needs to hold it for a period of time. Um, what I found is if a saw holds, if a saw will hold 7 pounds for, for 3 or 4 minutes, it's solid. That's what I go by. If it drops a half a pound in five minutes, I'm not worried. But usually my good saws, I'll pump them up and they don't lose anything, you know, in four or five minutes. So. Now I got to pull this damn thing apart. <laughs> 